So, welcome. So, in this particular lecture what we are going to do, we are going to look at some of the practice problems, not practice problems, problems which are conceptually based on whatever we taught during the last few lectures. So, uh, these are problems related to only natural convection, force convection problems we already covered a few lectures back. So, this is just to give an idea that what kind of problems okay, you would normally need to attack if you are an engineer, engineering student. Okay, so, let us look at this particular thing first. Okay. So, uh, in this particular problem, okay, if you look at, uh, so there is consider the natural convection, if you read the problem, okay, let us just put it here. Okay, so, consider the natural convection heat leak from a life size room with a 3 meter tall wall exposed to the cold ambient. The room air temperature is 25 degrees Celsius, where while the room side surface of the cold wall has an average temperature of 10 degrees Celsius, right. So, if the room circulation is to be simulated in a small laboratory apparatus filled with water, how tall the end ap apparatus needs to be? Because we, if you told earlier, if you remember some of the past lectures, we said that sometimes some of these flows can be represented by water, right? Because water being a high, highly dense fluid, okay, you can actually reduce the size of tall buildings. Because sometimes if you have to simulate the flows, you can need not do it in a exact replica of the building. So long as you are able to match certain physics certain non-dimensional quantities, you should be okay. You should be still able to do the same problem in a water. So, in the laboratory water experiment, the temperature between the water body and the inner surface of the cold wall is 10 degrees Celsius. So, certain things are given. So, for example, if this is the room, so inside it is 25 degrees Celsius. This wall of the room is at 10 degrees Celsius, just because it is in contact with the ambient. Think about it that you are trying to build something in say Kashmir or you are trying to build something in Shimla, where outside is very cold, right? And the inside room temperature is 25 degrees Celsius and this is 3 meter high, correct? Okay. So, this is a outside it is basically cold ambient, correct? Okay. Now, you want to replicate the same thing okay, in water we do not know what will be the height of this whole thing. Let us say that height is h, okay, it is a water, it is a water cavity say for example. Now, in this particular water uh, situation, right, you have a difference between this wall and this. So, the delta t is about 10 degrees Celsius, okay. So, that is the max that you can do. This is what your experimental limitations are, so to say, right. So, in this particular ambient, you have to simulate that what will be the height of this water, so that these whatever results you get here can be directly translated to here, right, without any loss of uh, generality, okay. So, this one let us go to now the, now the stuff, okay. So, uh, question 1, okay, both air and water, water have Prandtl number P r, okay, which are of the order 1, right. Air is about 0.72, water is about 6, right, okay, or sometimes greater. So, the Nusselt number, number, okay, of the room, room, heat leak, heat leak, Okay, is dependent on or rather depends only on Rayleigh number or in other words Rayleigh number based on the height. Okay. So, this is the Rayleigh number based on the height that is h. Okay. So, this Rayleigh number based on the height is all that we need. Okay. So, uh, if we has to be replicated in a water experiment. So, air experiment, if you are going to convert that to a water experiment, right, all you need to do is match the Rayleigh number. That is all, you just need to match the Rayleigh number, right. 
So, uh, if you look at table 4.1, you can get a very clear idea of what this is like. So, in Prandtl number if you look at table 4.1, when Prandtl number is greater than 1, okay, the thermal boundary layer thicknesses, thicknesses are h, r a h to the power of minus 1 fourth. Okay, so, that is all that you need basically a Nusselt number, this is all that you need is Rayleigh number to the power of 1 fourth, correct. This is the part of the table that you need, right. Okay. So, uh, for the room let us calculate then what is going to be the Rayleigh number, right. So, this is what is needs to be matched, that is what we, uh, what we did in our previous class. So, Rayleigh number of the room with air, let us put it that way, is basically G beta alpha gamma delta T H cube, this is given as 10 to the power of 10 7, 15 Kelvin is the difference in temperature between the two and 300 is basically the the temp the the height because the height is 3 meter. So, 3 meter uh, is the, is about 300 centimeters. So, all these things have been done in terms of centimeter cube Kelvin and this is actually given in terms of centimeter. Okay. So, basically what you get is 4.3 okay, into 10 to the power of 10. This is actually to be there in the transition regime but actually do not be bothered about that one for the time being okay, that whether it is transition or not. So, similarly the Rayleigh number in the for water in the experiment. Okay. So, what you need to do you have to match, so this is 14.45 this is different 10 to the power of 3 because 10 is basically uh, the, so centimeter cube K and this is 10 Kelvin into H cube of water. Okay. So, this should be equal to 4.3 into 10 to the power of 10 right that has to be matched right. So, from here you can calculate that what will be the value of H. So, H water comes out to be about 66 centimeter. Okay. So, point okay, 0.66 meter essentially right. So, you can see that we have been able to reduce the problem to roughly uh, quite a bit in size about 6 times in size okay. So, or roughly one fifth in size actually. So, this we have been able to reduce to one fifth of the size of the room of the of the apparatus apparatus okay without any without any loss okay of generality okay so this shows an interesting problem in which we have used a non dimensional number okay using table 4.1 just to simulate a air uh, system with an equivalent water system okay that's all that we have done over here right so this is an interesting problem which we did and this shows that how scaling or knowing which numbers are actually responsible okay for such phenomena okay is actually uh, actually very very important so that you can reduce the problem because sometimes some problems you cannot do the experiment in a real setup so you have to devise a uh, you know a uh, uh, surrogate kind of a setup, a setup which is a scaled version of the setup. That is how you can re, you can actually get away with so many problems. For example, you want to know something in a very large room, you can simulate that in a much smaller space just by using this scaling arguments that is what we have used over here. Okay. So, this particular thing let us look at this particular problem now. Okay. So, uh, electrical uh, conductor in a piece of electronic equipment may be modeled as an isothermal plate which is oriented vertically, isothermal plate oriented vertically. So, these are the important things that you should note. The heat transfer rate generated in the plate and released via natural convection is equal to Q. So, there is some heat 
which is generated in the plate which is transferred via natural convection to the ambient whose temperature is fixed is basically a large reservoir okay, with a temperature of T infinity. The height of the plate H may actually vary. Okay. Now, neglecting the numerical factors of order 1, okay, what is the relationship between Nusselt number and Rayleigh number for this arrangement and how will the temperature difference T naught minus T infinity okay, vary with height of the system. In other words, if H increases by a factor of 2, what happens to T naught minus T infinity. So, the problem is quite clear now. right? So, let us now look at this particular problem uh, in details. Okay. So, what we have question 2 now, we have this wall right, which has got a height h which can vary. Okay. So, you are forcing some q which can be at watt per meter which is forced in electrically. So, it could be the electric heat generation that is happening and this wall temperature is maintained at T naught, this is T infinity. Obviously, because of the heat that is being dumped to the, to the fluid leads to that natural circulation. Right? So, air Sprandtl number of air is of the order 1 right? and we assume that the flow is laminar. Right? So, your Nusselt number scales this Rh to the power of 1 fourth again via table 4.1 which we already saw. <coughs> what is the definition of Nusselt number? Nusselt number is Q double prime by H divided by T naught minus T infinity into K. Right? Okay. So, therefore, this becomes Q by 2 k into delta t okay because that would be the heat that will be transferred okay now what we do is that uh, this is the expression for nusselt number that we got so the nusselt number and r a h to the power of 1 fourth relation if we kind of uh, recast that whole thing q by k delta t scales as g beta. So, the, we are neglecting whatever numerical factors which are of the order 1 that is why the half and other things are excluded 1 fourth. Okay. So, this actually if you work out this part of the problem. Okay. So, you will find that delta t raised to the power of 5 by 4 h raised to the power of 3 fourth is equal to constant right? because the q that is dumped is constant. Okay. So, in other words delta t scales as some constant divided by h raised to the power of 3 fifth. Right? So, that means delta t and h they are actually related, but not related in a linear way. So, the problem actually says that h new by h old okay, is of the order 2. Right. Okay. So, therefore, delta t nu by delta t old is 2 raised to the power of uh, 3 by 5 3 by 5 which gives you 0.66. So, the delta t nu is actually giving you uh, a temperature which is 0 0.66 times the delta t old. So, this should be critical. Okay. So, delta t nu and delta t old. So, this using very simple analysis now that what did we do? We cast the Nusselt number. Okay. Then we found out uh, the relationship between Nusselt number and Rayleigh number using an order and we found that this is the relationship that naturally evolves. That means delta t 5 by 4 h to the power of 3 by 4th is a constant. So, therefore, using the constant scaling we have now uh, h nu by h old uh, if it is 2 then the delta nu will actually decrease in magnitude compared to the delta old by about uh, 
33 percent essentially right because it is 0 0.66 of the old right. So, this actually gives us another good idea by which you know you can you take a problem which is very simple in nature right what we said that where the total heat that is dumped is given ok. So, that is all that we have done and we have used the Nusselt number relay number scaling to answer the question it is a very simple exercise which was uh, which gives you an idea that how to do the scaling in case you face a problem. So, this is like an electronic chip. So, you can think of it like an electronic chip ok. You can think of it about a lot of other things ok, but electronic chip is one of the one of the key applications here ok. So, now let us look at this problem ok, because we do not want to go to question number 3 ok, which is a little bit uh, long drawn ok. So, uh, if you read this particular problem ok, you will find that rely on purely scaling argument, pure scaling argument to prove that Rayleigh number less than 1 denotes the domain in which the overall heat transfer across a square enclosure is dominated by pure conduction. So, that is the problem that we are trying to address over here right. So, it is a problem in which the domain we have to prove the overall heat transfer across a square enclosure is dominated by pure conduction. So, essentially the problem is something like this ok, insulated at the top and the bottom this is delta T ok, this is basically 0, this is your x, this is your y, this is the height of the cavity that is the problem right ok. So, we have to show that this is a pure conduction driven problem right. So, let us go to our little uh, scribble pad ok. So, we write the energy equation first. So, this is your question 4 essentially u dt dx plus v dt dy the alpha ok. So, this is what you call your advection term and this is basically your conduction term right. So, our motive is to show that relay number is less than 1 for this right. So, in this particular case this part can be represented as by h right <coughs> right v dt by dy and the other terms both are of the same order essentially ok. So, this is alpha delta t by h square correct. These are the two terms we have did done it I mean enough number of times where basically your x scales as h and y scales as h ok for the square region. Okay. Both are very similar because the state of pure conduction fills the entire space. This is because the state of pure conduction conduction fills the entire space, entire space, okay, entire space between the differentially heated side walls between the differentially heated side walls correct. So, that is why both the scales are h because it fills the whole cavity right. So, that is why the scales are h ok. So, uh, we have a v which is unknown over here right. So, what we invoke is that we invoke the balance ok which is friction balances buoyancy got it friction balances buoyancy ok. So, in other words so friction balances buoyancy means so V uh, ok uh, comes from the momentum equation. So, from the momentum equation so V V by H cube ok G beta delta T by h 
right ok. Now if you eliminate V from these two equations, so this equation can be our equation 1, this equation can be our equation 2 right. So if you substitute V over here, so V will scale as G beta delta T by H ok into H cube divided by gamma right. So this will give as G beta delta T into H square by gamma ok. So now if you substitute the same thing over here ok. So if you substitute this expression of V take it here right. So that will give you the expression then that relay number H is actually much much less than 1 ok. So if you do that kind of an expansion you will see that relay number will be lesser. So you understood the process so it is friction with buoyancy from the momentum invoke the balance this is from the momentum equation and this we have done 1000 different times ok. So friction with buoyancy so you get the expression and then you actually find out what V is and then you substitute it in the energy equation because we say it that conduction is much much more than advection and the state of pure conduction basically fills the entire space between the two differentially heated side walls. That is why X and Y scales as, as H in both these cases right. So that is also another, in, another interesting problem ok. Let us look at this particular problem now ok which is a long one actually and uh, let us see at how this problem is actually so that you can think about it a little bit ok so that uh, we can take it up. So the, here the problem is that you have uh, if you can see them properly that there is a heated wall and a cold wall and you have the typical relay Bernard convection because your relay number with respect to H is greater than 1708 ok. The heat transfer coefficient is uh, lower when convection is absent which is obvious and the transfer of heat from the top to the bottom wall is by pure con conduction ok. So what we have what people have designed is that you get this relay Bernard convection right. So they have inserted this partition which you can see over here if you can see that there is a partition. Uh, that is over there. Now the top and the bottom of this partition ok. So there is a delta T difference between the two right. So that delta T partition between the top and the bottom that is still there. So you are inserting a partition which is at some level so at some distance between the top and the bottom wall and not only that the temperature of this partition ok is in between the TH and TC right. So that is how the partition has been designed ok. So what happens is that this partition is like an isothermal wall. So that is what we have said. It can be modeled as an isothermal wall with a temperature between the bottom wall temperature and the top wall temperature. Assume further that convection currents are absent above and below the partition right. Find the optimal partition level by maximizing the overall temperature difference delta T for which the state of pure conduction can be preserved right. So we want to uh, want to basically preserve the state of this pure con conduction that means between the top and the bottom partitions in the top half and the bottom half there cannot be any convection cells. In other words the Rayleigh number has to be less than 1708 between the top and the bottom right. Not only that ok uh, we have to find out at what level this partition has to be inserted that is the main question right at what level the partition should be installed so that you basically get rid of this convection cells. Because we want a thermal insulation we do not want convection cells to originate because that will equilibrate out things ok. So we want to so imagine this to be a problem in which there is a hot top bottom and a, and a cold top and you want to preserve it that way ok. So pure conduction is what we want and because your heat transfer coefficient increases when you actually have convection which is present right and so this is the proposed problem right as far as what we can see. So a partition is at an isothermal level so the partition temperature 
is definitely greater than T c, but it is less than T h right and the height of this partition this you can say it is H 1, this you can say it is H 2 or vice versa right. So, we want to know and total H 1 plus H 2 is obviously equal to H right. So, we want to know that how this partition will actually work. Okay. Now, let us look at this problem Q 5. Okay. So, uh, H 1 let us say it is some x into H okay. and H 2 is given as 1 minus x into H where delta T 1 is given as x into delta T and delta T T 2 is given as 1 minus x into delta T. Okay. So, the problem is basically I will pose the problem and we will solve it in the next class. So, this is H 1, this is H 2 for you, okay. this is cold, this is hot and this is the partition, where the partition is given as a percentage factor which is x right? Okay. and the temperature difference if it is a pure conduction limit problem then therefore, this will be like wherever the partition is installed this will be delta T 1 and the rest will be your delta T 2 okay. and this being your total delta T. Okay. So, we have posed this problem now we will see how to solve this problem in the next class along with a couple of other problems that we will solve before we wrap up natural convection completely. So, think about this problem and we will pose it in the next class. Uh, so, we have given the variables how to attack and we have also told that partitions are such that the Rayleigh number has to be less than 1708 in both sides. So, R A 1 and R A 2 right both has to be less than 1708 and then we have to solve this problem by some kind of an optimization way. Okay. See you in the next class.